Well, when you think about it, I, realistically, education is never going to keep up with changes in society. If you think when broad education and assessment was introduced into society, it was a very different place. And essentially, it was introduced to create a workforce. Now, society has moved on dramatically. But education still looks like it did all of those years ago. But it's until some people make big decisions and say, OK, let's look at the system really, really look at the system and see where should we be in 20 years from now? Where should we be in 30 years from now? There's a huge disjunct between education and society. And education, in many ways, I believe, is broken. We have to try to fix it. Well, number one, I think, if you're going to innovate, thinking that you're introducing ICT is not innovation. That's just one small change. If you're going to innovate, you've got to think about everything around, the whole wraparound, all around the system. You've got to think, how can I make changes to my system to make ICT work better, to make ICT help my system better? So that's one part of it. Innovation isn't just one thing. Innovation is everywhere. The other thing is, innovation itself is useless unless you get buy-in from stakeholders. Stakeholders have to be involved. And the more buy-in you get from stakeholders, the better. The best way to get buy-in from stakeholders is to bring them into the innovation as early as possible. So that when you're creating new systems, you're help, they're helping you to create the system. And then when you're evaluating the system, they can help you to evaluate. And when you report on how the system is working, you're not just reporting to academics or to politicians, but you can also report now to your stakeholders because you know what they want, because they've told you. So if you can round the system up with input from them at the beginning, input in the middle, input through the system, and then reporting to them at the end, you have a system where you get full buy-in. That's really interesting, isn't it? When, <laughs> when you said it earlier, oh, we'll talk about the class of 2025, I was thinking, God, that's a long way away. And now you say, it's only 10 years ago, God. Yeah. The negative side of me says exactly the same as they look mm -hmm. like today. The positive side, the slightly positive side, will be that the classrooms will change in terms of their dynamic. And the classroom won't be limited just to a space like this. So learning will be recognised as taking place both formally and informally and in different contexts. But it's not going to be a teacher to the class all the time. I think it has to change. 2025, I think at least some countries will have accepted that that is happening and it's going to happen. And I think Europe is leading the way. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen here.